द हीरो फॉर स्वामी इवेंट्स टूक एन अनएक्सपेक्टेड टर्न फादर लुक्ड ओवर द न्यूज पेपर ही वॉज रीडिंग अंडर द हॉल लैम्प एंड सेड स्वामी लिजन टू दिस न्यूज हैज बीन रिसीव्ड अबाउट द ब्रेवरी ऑफ अ विलेज लैड हु वाइल रिटर्निंग होम बाय द जंगल पाथ केम फेस टू फेस विद द टाइगर द पैराग्राफ डिस्क्राइब्ड द फाइट द बॉय हैड विद द टाइगर एंड हिज फ्लाइट अप द ट्री वेर ही स्टेड हाफ अ डे टिल सम पीपल came that way and killed the tiger after reading it through father looked at swami fixedly and asked what do you say to that swami said i think he must have been a very strong and grown up person not a boy at all how could a boy fight a tiger you think you are wiser than the newspaper father sneered a man may have the strength of an elephant and yet be a coward whereas another may have the strength of a straw but if he has courage he can do anything courage is everything strength and age are not important swami disputed the theory how can it be father suppose i have all the courage what could i do if a tiger should attack me leave alone the strength can you prove you have courage let me see if you can sleep alone tonight in my office room a frightful proposition swami thought He had always slept beside his granny in the passage and any change in this arrangement kept him trembling and awake all night he hoped at first that father was only joking he mumbled weakly yes and tried to change the subject he said very loudly and with a great deal of enthusiasm we are going to admit even elders in our cricket club here after we are buying brand new bats and balls Our captain has asked me to tell you. We will see about that later. Father cut in. You must sleep alone hereafter. Swami realized that the matter had gone beyond his control. From a challenge it had become a command. He knew that his father's tenacity at such moments. From the first of next month I will sleep alone father. No, you must do it now. It is disgraceful sleeping beside granny or mother like a baby. You are in the second form and I don't like the way you are being brought up. He said and looked at his wife. Why do you look at me while you say it? She asked. I hardly know anything about the boy. No no, I don't mean you, said father. If you mean your mother is spoiling him, tell her so and don't look at me, she said and turned away. Swami's father sat gloomily gazing at the newspaper on his lap. Swami rose silently and tiptoed to his bed in the passage. Granny was sitting up in her bed and remarked, "Boy, are you already feeling sleepy? Don't you want to hear a story?" Swami made wild gesticulations to silence his granny, but the good old lady saw nothing. So Swami threw himself on the bed and pulled the blanket over his face. Granny said, "Don't cover your face." Are you really very sleepy? Swami leaned over and whispered, "Please, please shut up, Granny. Don't talk to me and don't let anyone call me even if the house is on fire. If I don't sleep at once, perhaps I shall die." He turned over and curled and snored under the blanket till he found his blanket pulled away. Presently, his father came and stood over him. "Swami, get up," he said. He looked like an apparition in the semi-darkness of the passage which was lit by the cone of a light from the hall. Swami stirred and groaned as if in sleep. Father said, "Get up, Swami." Granny pleaded, "Why do you disturb him?" "Get up, Swami," said father for the third time and Swami got up. Father rolled up his bed and took it under his arm and said, "Come with me." Swami looked at Granny hesitated for a moment and followed his father into the office room let me sleep in the hall father swami pleaded your office room is very dusty and there may be scorpions behind your law books there are no scorpions little fellow sleep on the bench if you like can i have a lamp burning in the room no you must learn not to be afraid of darkness it is only a question of habit you must cultivate good habits will you at least leave the door open All right but promise you won't roll up your bed and go to your granny's side at night 
If you do it, I will make you the laughing stock of your school. Swami felt cut off from humanity. He was pained and angry. He did not like the strain of cruelty he saw in his father's nature. He hated the newspaper for printing the tiger story. He wished that the tiger had not spared the boy who didn't appear to be a boy after all but a monster. As the night advanced and the silence in the room deepened, his heart beat faster. He remembered all the stories of devils and ghosts he had heard in his life. How often his chum Manny had seen the devil in the banyan tree at his street end. And what about the poor Munisami's father who spat out blood because the devil near the river's edge slapped his cheek when he was returning home late one night and so on and on his thoughts continued he was faint with fear a ray of light from the street lamp strayed in and cast shadows on the wall through the stillness all kinds of noises reached his ears the ticking of the clock rustle of the trees snoring sounds and some vague night insects humming for a moment he expected the devils to come up and carry him away there was the instance of his old friend in fourth class who suddenly disappeared and was said to have been carried by a ghost to sayam or nepal swami hurriedly got up and spread his bed under the bench and crouched there it seemed to be a much safer place more compact and reassuring he shut his eyes tight and encased himself in the blanket once again and unknown to himself fell asleep and in sleep was racked with nightmares a tiger was chasing him his feet struck to the ground he desperately tried to escape but his feet would not move the tiger was at his back and he could hear its claws scratch the ground scratch scratch and then a loud thud swami tried to open his eyes but his eyelids would not open and the nightmare continued it threatened to continue forever swami groaned in despair with a desperate effort he opened his eyes he put his hand out to feel his granny's presence at his side as was his habit but he only touched the wooden leg of the bench and his lonely state came back to him he sweated with fright and now what was this rustling he moved to the edge of the bench and stared into the darkness something was moving down he lay gazing at it in horror his end had come He realized that the devil would presently pull him out and tear him and so why should he wait as it came nearer he crawled out from under the bench hugged it with all his might and used his teeth on it like a mortal weapon ayyo something has bitten me went forth an agonized thundering cry and was followed by a heavy tumbling and falling admits the furniture in a moment father cook and servant came in carrying light and all three of them fell on the burglar who lay admitted the furniture with a bleeding ankle congratulations were showered on swami next day his classmates looked at him with respect and his teacher patted his back the headmaster said that he was a true scout swami had bitten into the flesh of the most notorious housebreakers of the district and the police were grateful to him for it the inspector said why don't you join the police when you are grown up Swami said for the sake of politeness certainly yes though he had quite made up his mind to be an engine driver a railway guard or a bus conductor later in his life when he returned home from the club that night father asked where is the boy he is asleep already he didn't have a wink of sleep the whole of last night said his mother where is he sleeping in his usual place mother said casually he went to bed at 7:30 sleeping beside his granny again father said no wonder he wanted to be asleep before i could return home clever boy mother lost her temper you let him sleep where he likes you needn't risk his life again father mumbled as he went in to change all right molly coddle and spoil him as much as you like only don't blame me afterwards swami following the whole conversation from under the blanket felt tremendously relieved to hear that his father was giving him up